Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. You want to get more secure? Hmm. Today, you'll know how to encrypt your data using TrueCrypt. Welcome to Know How. Hello, I am Zach Tar. Hey, Leo Laporte. How are you? I'm very well. Today, we're going to show you how. Know How is a show where we show you how to do stuff. Know how, right? That's, and, a, that's uh, the goal, this anyway. Is, this is a good one because we've talked a lot on Security Now and other shows about TrueCrypt and other encryption mm -hmm. solutions. And this is going to show you how to use it. Yeah, basically, we want to talk about TrueCrypt because there's a, like a use case that I wanted to do. I wanted to put up some files on Dropbox. I want to make sure that no matter what happens, I'm always in control of that, even if Dropbox gets compromised, because yeah. this happened a while ago. And I'm from the school of Steve Gibson. My information comes from the expert of security now. So if I, if I, if I panic, I'm going to go to you. He talks about something called TNO, trust no mm -hmm. one. And Dropbox is not a TNO solution because no. we know that Dropbox has the password to our information. So anybody at Dropbox, any employee, a rogue employee could look at that information and of course they could hand it over to police. So if you really want privacy, you gotta trust no one and use encryption that only you have the keys. That's right, and that's what TrueCrypt lets you do. And as I understand it, it's an open source solution. And the thing is it does on the fly encryption, which means when you're saving, you don't have to like save a file, then encrypt it, then upload it. It's always being encrypted and decrypted the whole time. It's actually quite speedy that you could do this with even your whole operating system. There are options to do that. But today we're going to create a little volume container that we're going to put up into Dropbox. So this will be something that is encrypted when uh, we're not logged in. But as soon as we log in, we can use it as if it were completely unencrypted. Right. It almost, to me, it just feels like it's a disk image you've mounted or same old thing you're used to. Right. It's not that different when it comes to usage. As far as I could tell, it felt like a normal regular file because it was so speedy. Computers and drives are fast enough now that that's not going to slow them down. You mentioned one other thing, and I really want to underscore this. TrueCrypt is an open source solution. Mm -hmm. People might say, oh, good, that means it's free. And yes, it is. But more importantly, the source code, how it works, is visible to all. Now, you may not be able to look at C source code and say, oh, well, I understand what this is doing, but plenty of geeks have. And so we know for a fact there's no back door to TrueCrypt. Nobody can break into your TrueCrypt encrypted files except somebody with a password. And that's really important because if you're using commercial encryption and if you use Microsoft's BitLocker or uh, 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 file Vault from mm -hmm. Apple. Those are closed source solutions. You can't be sure that there's no governmental backdoor. There's nobody that knows the password. TrueCrypt, you can absolutely be sure of that. It's 100% secure. The other thing is if that file gets out, that volume container gets out, it doesn't matter unless another person has your password. That file is completely useless to somebody without that password. Right. So the stronger you make your passwords, the better it is. So it, it's That's also- That's important too because the one vulnerability TrueCrypt has is if you had a really stupid password like monkey123, it, it's possible to brute force it. So make sure you have a good, strong, random, long password, at least 12, 13, 14. They'll even let you do passphrases. In fact, you're gonna show them some interesting ways that you can pass lock this stuff. That, and don't forget, TrueCrypt is cross-platform. It's gonna work on everything. I love OS that 10, too. Windows, yeah. and Linux. So you'll be able to open up your files on other machines when you wanna do that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna show you how that works. Let me open up TrueCrypt here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a volume. Pretty basic. And this and, is in the TrueCrypt interface. And, you know, for open source software, this looks pretty good. Uh, pretty good is a good way to put it. It's very much like an engineer made it. And so we're going to create an encrypted file container. Hey, at least they have buttons. And they're all, they're it's not options. all command line, right? There are other options to create a, uh, you can create a volume with, uh, within a partition or drive. But TrueCrypt on the Mac is going to try to format everything. On other platforms like Windows, it doesn't bother to do that. So you so, could encrypt your whole operating system on Windows. That's important. So uh, you could create an encrypted container, which is like a folder, or you can actually have an encrypted volume, which is like a drive? 
Is that the difference? It's kind of like a disk image to me, as it's far as I, as, as, okay. as I understand okay. it. So I'm going to create an encrypted file container. There's also whole disk encryption with TrueCrypt. You can encrypt your entire drive. Absolutely everything. But when you're booting up and you're using that, you have to type in your password before you get to start up your right. operating system. Yeah, you can't boot the operating I've system. You can't see it. I've even seen hidden operating systems things. If you really get into TrueCrypt, there's some crazy things you can do. Uh, we're going to set up a standard TrueCrypt volume right now. And we'll show you a hidden in a minute. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pick a location for this. Now, you could create, you can probably, if you wanted to, you could select a file, and then what's going to happen, that file is going to be erased, and TrueCrypt's uh, container is going to replace that. I'll just come up so with a new name. That's here. important. It'll look like a file to anybody who's just casually inspecting the operating system or your hard drive. So I can write migratenovel.txt. Hit there save. You go. It's not really a text file, but it's named.txt. Now we've got tons of options when it Does comes to. Does this matter? Does it matter which kind of encryption you use? Which one you use? You use? Yeah. As, as far as I can tell, the defaults are good enough. So if you don't know anything about AES versus Serpent versus Two Fish, <laughs> which all sound crazy to me. I'd use AES. AES is very strong. Uh, I believe Serpent and Two Fish were options that were trying to become AES. Right. But AES is a standardization. It stood the test of time, my friends. So we've got that. And if you see these options here, you actually can chain them. You can do AES, Two Fish, and Serpent. And what that means is when somebody is trying to decrypt your volume, it's going to take them forever because there are three layers of encryption on this. AES is good enough for that. Then there's hash algorithm. These three options, there will be a show, there will be a link to the show, in the show notes to explain what they mean. Just use the defaults. Defaults work just fine. We're going to hit next and we're going to go ahead and make a volume. I'm going to make a small volume for this demo, 20 megabytes. But you can do one up all the way to the total of your free available space. You can do that. You, you can do whatever you want because it says free space, 412 gigabytes. And here's where you want to have a secure password. Now read this text. This is giving you some good information. So, Long, random, they're recommending 20 characters, the maximum length 64 characters, and do use a random combination of numbers, characters, upper and lower case, as well as punctuation. The more random, the better. Of course, you got to remember it. Yeah, for this demo, I'm going to put a lousy one, and I'm just going to show it because nobody's going to It won't gonna get stop to... you, by the way, for using, from using uh, yeah, Monkey123. So two, if I'm going to write know-how123 yeah. and know-how123, if I could type them. Now, what's it... a key file? It says you can use a key file. Key files stuff. are really cool as far as I can tell. You hit key files, and what you do is it acts as a second layer of protection. So I can say, okay. So I'm... they need to have the password and this file. And this file. That's the great thing. So I'm going to say this screenshot is going to be this key file. That's so good. if somebody does get my password and they're trying to decrypt this somewhere else, if they don't have this file that I have locally, they have no way of opening this file. So we've done that screenshot and we're going to hit OK. And you can also have the option, by the way, to generate a random key file right over here. It's going to hit OK. You might keep that on a USB key somewhere or off the drive. That's a great point. You can keep it on USB, then again, you have like a physical lock on your files. And there's no, remember, no back door to this. If you forget your password, if you lose your key file, you're SOL. It does give you a big warning here saying, warning, short passwords are easy to crack using brute force. Are you That's sure? good that it tells you that. It does tell you that. Hit yes, just because of this, this example here. Now, does it matter what file system I choose? It depends on what you want to be able to read this on, right? FAT right. is readable. Everything can read that. Exactly. If you go with Mac OS Extended, you're going to be able to only look at this on OS X machines, and I use a variety of different machines. So I like to use FAT there. Hit next. Look now, at that. Now, here we have a, a, uh, a volume format option. So it Move says Move your here, mouse randomly. It says, move my mouse. And what's happening, you're, if you can you're see this, this. this random pool here, there's all this data is flashing by. These computers don't actually generate random numbers. They just appear to. They're pseudo-random. The more noise you can give them, the more chaos you can add, the uh, better the randomness of the uh, algorithm. So you could do that for like a minute or 10 if you wanted to. <laughs> Again, for this demo, we're just going to stop right there, hit format. You're giving it some noise. Nice job. Now we've got a volume. So we've got my great novel right here. So if I try to open this up, it looks like gibberish. Now, my novel does look like gibberish, but this is not that file. Uh, this is the file, if you try to open it up, you see it's just nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to pick my great novel.txt from TrueCrypt. I'm going to hit open. And what's going to That's happen? That's the volume. It's going to mount it. So I'm going right. to hit mount here. And now it wants my password. And if I bother to say OK, it should fail because I didn't put the key file in. Oh. I want to show that's very important that you use By the, the key way, file. By the way, very important also, it didn't say there's no key file. 
TrueCrypt tries as, as hard as it can to kind of obfuscate what you've done. They don't, they're not going to give a hint to some guy, oh, you need a key file. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't tell you what's wrong. Yeah. So I'm just going to put my key file, and I really hope that was it because I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I'm going to hit OK. It's going to uh, run just uh, fine. Oh, there we goodness. go. Now it shows up as a no name here, and it's a volume or disk image. Look at that. And I can just drag and drop things to it if I wanted to, left and right. Now, you're dragging them there, and they're unencrypted right now, but when you close the computer, they'll just be encrypted and safe? As far as I understand, it's encrypting as this is happening. It's encrypted now. It's encrypted right now. You can see it because you've given it the pass. But... That's right, because what TrueCrypt does when you install it is it installs a driver. That way, that's the way your operating system is even seeing this. If somebody has a computer and they see this file, if they don't have TrueCrypt, they can't open it. So right. you have to have TrueCrypt there. And if you have this on a USB key, save some space and have the EXE or DMG with you so you can have TrueCrypt with you on the go. Uh, what, the last thing I want to show is a hidden volume. See, sometimes somebody gets your hard drive and says, hey, I see a two terabyte text file. That must be a TrueCrypt file. You want it somehow so that people don't even know there's encrypted data on there. It looks just as random gibberish on the hard drive. We, we can do that with a hidden volume, which is yeah. really kind of neat. And what happens is, when you're starting this up, it's pretty simple. We go back. TrueCrypt calls this plausible deniability. What encrypted volume? There's no encrypted volume on there. So we're going to create an encrypted file container. Uh, as far as I can tell, no speech to, uh, text to speech sounds like that, Leo. I need to get the, on that hidden TrueCrypt volume. <laughs> and you can just do the same. It's the same procedure. Now, I've already made one. And you see that I've named it very uncleverly outer because there's two different layers. On the right side of my screen, you can see outer as the uh, file. If I double click it, it doesn't do anything because the file itself. Where's outer? I don't see. Outer, oh, OK. Now we're seeing the icons. Okay. There it is. There's okay. outer right there. That, now, this thing, what, if I wanted to mount this, this actual file, Outer just looks like a file. It just looks like a file. I didn't okay. bother to give it an extension. It, you try to open it, there's really nothing good to do that. But it's not invisible. No. Not the outer file. There's two different things going on in here. Uh. So we're going to mount, we're going to select the file of outer. And I'm going to give one password. This works with two different passwords. When you're setting this up, you're going to have two different passwords for your, your, your volume that's visible, and then your hidden volume. So if I hit this and I hit mount, it's going to ask for my password. You can use a pass phrase as well if that's easier to remember. It'll be long. You know, uh, you could say something like, uh, I don't know, uh, today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth, exclamation mark. And that's going to be pretty hard to guess, but easy to remember. You could do that. And the other thing is, so in, in this version, you see Outer 20. Now, why I've named it Outer 20 is because it appears to be a 20 megabyte file, 20 megabytes of available space. Now, what actually is happening is there's a hidden volume within here no. that comprises 50% of this. So oh. I'm going to You're unmount this. Clever son of a gun. I'm going to remount outer. And what's going to well, dismount that and then hit mount. Now, if I put in a different password that I remember. This is where LastPass is nice because you can put all this stuff in LastPass. One of the reasons you might want multiple passwords or a uh, key file uh, is if you want to, for instance, give. Uh, a friend or your attorney access to critical information. You don't want to give them everything they need to unlock it. You give the attorney the key file, give your friend the password, say, if anything should happen to me, you guys have to get together. It's like a two-key solution on a nuclear launch code, right? Exactly. The, the, the more layers you have, the harder it is for this data to get out. Now, if we go to my screen, we go to the right side, you'll see a new thing. As I put my password in, I see now hidden. This was inside of outer. So what happens is, depending on the password you put in to TrueCrypt, you can see this has 10 megabytes available. This is actually within the other container. And again, I can use it like any other thing, just drag and drop files to it. And right there, this, unless somebody has this other password, they cannot find this data. So you give the, give the, the bad guy the outer password, say, here's the password, put some innocuous stuff in there, he'll never know that inside there there's something even more valuable. And, and for me, I was trying to think, you know, what's the actual, like, normal usage for this? Identity theft, I think, is the biggest concern for people. Well, if when you it comes take to a that. laptop on the road or you have data on an external hard drive, you better darn well encrypt it. The other thing is, like, I scan everything. I like to keep all my files and tax forms and my kids' social security card, all kinds of things that are incredibly sensitive, and I don't want this data getting right. out. Right. So if, if somebody has all, like, 20 
you my password, they can get in. But that's the key here because everything is within that encrypted volume. You know, it's a great exercise, and I had this happen by accident. Pretend you've lost your laptop. You left it at the airport. Now what would you do? What would you do? To paraphrase Carl Malden. Uh, my mom, you know, she was out here for a month. Mm -hmm. She went home. She called me from the airport. She said, somebody stole my iPad and my laptop, and I, and, and I don't know what to do. And I said, well, get on the plane. I'll send you a new one. We'll figure this out. And then I thought long and hard, oh, my gosh, did she have a password on it? There's a file on the on the on the root directory called passwords.txt. Did I get rid of that? There was all <laughs> all this ran through my brain. Fortunately, it turned out the laptop and iPad had slipped out into the trunk out of her bag, and I had it, mailed it back to her all was well. But it was a great exercise, and I recommend this as an exercise. What would happen if you just left your laptop at a coffee shop? What would you need to change? What would you need to fix? Would everybody have access to all your most private, vital information? Think about it. That's, that's, that's a good way to yeah, put yourself the, in that scenario. The mental exercise. So we've got the hidden stuff. It's very hard to find. Uh, and that's just a primer on TrueCrypt. We're going to have lots oh, there's and a lots lot of notes. A lot of settings. There was two episodes of Security Now yeah, about this, and yeah. we're going to have links to that in the show notes. I actually read the transcripts. That's what I was doing. That's how I learned it. <laughs> but it's really geeky. It's like, which, which you know, how it works, all that stuff. But it's, it's really It's geeky. absolutely brilliant. It's, it's, yeah. it's like... Steve's a big fan of TrueCrypt. This would be the 101 course. Recommends. That's like you're in the 501 yeah. if you're going to Security yeah. Now. Now, uh, let's head on over to feedback, our nameless feedback segment, which now has a theme song, apparently. <laughs> it's got a song, but no name. What is the feedback this week, now, I as? Well, first, we've got a bunch of suggestions from folks. They want to title this either Know-It-Alls or Feedback Loop. <laughs> now, I like both. Know-It-Alls is good. I like the Know-It-Alls because what happens in our, in our Google Plus community, which is available at gplus.to slash twitkh, is people are helping out each other all the time, and they're solving their own things. So I'm thinking know-it-alls for that kind of thing, but we also have a bunch of feedback. Like we got this one, I believe this is a know-it-all kind of scenario from Melissa, an email saying, hi, I just finished watching your episode on turning your phone into a computer. I have been doing this with my jailbroken iPhone 4 using the app Display Out. How do you like that? I, a the Rolling Stones? Roll. You know, I have this set up, it's silenced. But I have it set up so that if certain people call, it rings. It must be important. Yes, but I'm going to ignore it. Anyway, this person's been using the Sorry app. Sorry about that. Uh, it's okay. The, the app Display Out, and the app mirrors the iPhone screen on your HDTV, allows you to play not just movies from YouTube, but all video and audio. Wow. Just hook up the phone with an HDMI cable, uh, and you're ready to go. Love the show. Hey, do more stuff on jailbroken phones. I think that's a good idea. We oh, should be, that's should a good idea. We, we have, have we jailbroken a phone yet? We've done it a long time ago. We did ago. the Android. Did this we do the like, iPhone? Yeah, we, we did the iPhone. On the same episode. This is like episode yeah. four. Yeah, this a long time ago. Way back yeah. when. And anyway, we got an email. Uh, we got a tweet from somebody saying, at Ayaz, do you have a know-how episode on installing an SSD in a MacBook Pro? Ooh. Not sure if we should, if I should clone I my believe, old one. I believe one. we do. We do. That's why I wanted to bring this up. We do have this great website called twit.tv slash kh. And this episode was episode 10, the one you're talking about. Leo upgraded his MacBook Pro, his Retina one. It was such a simple thing to do. I almost didn't want to even do it. I thought it would take a couple of minutes. And it's, a, it's also available on YouTube, and thousands of people Easy have been watching do. this. Easy to do. I think one of the things that uh, you find on the show and all these other projects you'll find at twit.tv slash kh is you find out how easy it is to do these yeah. actual projects. Yeah. Because they might seem like, oh, a true crypt. That sounds like something I would never, ever do. I would never mess with Arduino. Simple. We can do it, and we show you how at twit.tv slash kh. So keep giving us your feedback, your show ideas over at Google+, Plus or email us at knowhow at twit.tv. We do the show what day? On Thursdays? Thursdays, yeah, right on, whenever I get around to it after uh, iPad the day. Uh, usually it'll be around 3 uh, p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UT. See. And if you miss it live, it's available at twit.tv slash kh oh, yeah. or youtube.com slash knowhow. Been organizing and tagging things a little bit differently there, so you might be able to find things a little easier as well. So like the home theater stuff's together, working on our networking stuff together, tagging. It's the future. Well, now that you know how to protect your privacy with encryption and TrueCrypt, now go out and crypt away. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Know How. Crypt away. Crypt away. <laughs>